there. Today I'm going to be doing a canvas uh, featuring that very beautiful photo of a sort of winter warrior looking lady and I've gathered together some bits and pieces in a tray that I might be able to use. I don't really know what I'm going for with the canvas. I know I want it to be wintry but I don't know if I want it to be like dark black sky with white snow or if I'm going to add or you know, the blues and things so that it's a more daylight looking I don't know what I've decided to do is just start and see where the process takes me I want to give the photo a couple of coats of clear gesso to protect it from water and the paints um, I'll give it one coat just now let it dry and give it a second coat just to make sure that any bits I missed in the first coat get covered in the second one. And while it's um, the first coat is drying, I'm going to apply some texture straight onto the canvas through a stencil. I'm going to use the Bindweed Wallpaper Stencil by Finnebar and I will put modelling paste through it with a palette knife or a silicone brush. And while the um, modelling paste is drying, I'll give my photo another coat of gesso and cut it out so that I just have the lady's head. There's a little piece of video missing now. Look at this. Whilst I was drying the canvas with the heat gun, I laid it down on the photo and scorched it. However, I've decided I'm just going to use it anyway because there's a good chance that patch will get covered um, with embellishments because I will be going for a, quite a classic Finnebar style from several different classes I've done with her and there'll be a lot of embellishments going on around the ladies here so I'm just going to use the photo anyway but I could really, I could kick myself for being so silly. I'm going to coat canvas with um, black gesso. I'm starting off with the thought that I might have a dark wintry night. I can always change it as we go if I decide that's not what I want after all. I'll just leave you watching this for a bit. stick the photo directly onto the canvas. Um, ordinarily I'd put a little bit of cardboard or something behind it to have it raised but I've decided I'd quite like it to be flat against it. So I'm going to use 3D gel. It doesn't matter if it's gloss or matte, I just happen to be using this. And um, it's quite hard to press something onto canvas because there's nothing supporting the canvas underneath so I press it down from the top but I also give it a good rub on the bottom as well to make sure it's stuck on. And this is where I'm going to start uh, adding the embellishments now around her head and building up lots of layers. I don't have an exact plan. I'm just going to pick up pieces and glue them where I feel I want them to go. I'll be using the heavy body gel. And because that stays wet for a while, it gives me a chance to move things if I don't like where they've gone. Uh, and rearrange uh, depending on what I decide needs to go where and I've put on that horn which is I made from a leftover bit of resin when I was pouring the mold for other things and it might get covered up it might not 
and I've got lots of bits of broken jewellery and these beautiful snowflakes from Finnabar which I absolutely love. So again I'm just going to let the video run as I build up the composition. I want to add some um, little mini art stones so I'm using this soft gloss gel medium and I'm just dabbing it in some of the gaps where there isn't an embellishment and I'm hoping later at some point I'll be able to make those tiny little art stones look a little bit like snow hail that's blown in in a drift. This is the point where I left it for a little bit to dry because a lot of things were still very very wobbly um, so I left it for maybe two three hours. Obviously that's not enough for it to be completely dry and stable but it certainly felt enough for me to be able to start working on it again. And I'm just going to be adding even more to the composition. I'm using the vintage um, melange pebbles only because that's what I have most of. It's a little bit sad to have to cover up that beautiful yellows and ambers, but 
it'll have to happen. So I feel like that's my composition ready and it's time to start adding gesso to this so that I can paint over it. I'm starting with the clear gesso to go around the photograph um, and maybe a little bit into the start of the composition but not much. The rest of the composition I'm going to cover in black gesso because I still haven't made up my mind if I'm doing a nighttime snowy scene or a daytime snowy scene. I'm going to start adding colour now. I've chosen these quite wintry looking blues. Um, there's Opal Magic, Sparks and Metallic. This um, is the Sparks Magical Pond. The Opal Magic uh, Blue Violet. 
another opal magic. I think this is a blue gold. Yes, blue gold. And I've also got metallic paint here and the white pearl. The lovely thing about the opal magics is that depending on whether you've got a black background or a white background, you get a completely different look. And on the black background, you get a lot of their other colour that is blue gold. So in this one, you'll get a lot of the gold, whereas if you were doing it on white, you'd get a lot of the blue. And I really love that. And when you tilt it in the light, you can see different colours coming through. And although I still haven't decided on what look I'm going for, this colour will be a nice base of a dry brush over with some white and it might show from underneath. Um, or I might end up covering it up completely. But either way, I'm still glad that I'm doing this. I get to see the lovely change in colours. It reminds me what, look at that, sorry pausing but look at that violet showing up isn't that gorgeous um it reminds me of what these colors do for future projects and some of it might still show through when i'm finished but what i do know is that this is not looking wintry enough for me it's dramatic and it's beautiful but it's not really seeing snow or cold or so i'll, I'll probably do more layers but let's just carry on with this just now. those colours are absolutely gorgeous and so metallic -y and shiny. I've decided I'm definitely needing it to be more snowy and wintry. So I'm going to start dry brushing uh, in the first instance with a uh, white heavy gesso. And um, I say dry brushing, some of it will be very light dry brushing, but I'll maybe build up more and more white as I go. Again, I'm playing it by ear and I'm just seeing where the process takes me. get back some of that lovely 
shiny metallic look that it all had. I'm now going over that white dry brushing with the white pearl metallic paint. like this white over the top of the black look because I feel like it still feels like night time and snow. Uh, I've got natural built-in shadow now and the top is nice and light. I've come back to adding colours and I'm uh, starting again with the Magic Upon Sparks to add that nice light blue colour. I'm going to be using the Opal Magic, the blue gold again. I think you see the difference this time that because I'm painting over white it doesn't have such a strong gold look you get that nice greeny blue showing instead um, and although it's hard to see on the screen the colors that I painted originally are still showing through um, to me the camera's not really showing it up but they're still there Building up on the snowy, cold, wintry theme, I'm using crushed ice effect paste. I'm just going to use a little plastic palette here, knife, and dab it over the top in some places, um, just to give a sort of nice, icy, sparkly feel when it's dry. And I'll probably put it around the edges of the canvas too, so she's surrounded by this snowy ice. Because I love the lovely shimmery um, metallic -y look that you get from the mica powders and the fact that I can sprinkle them on so the where they land is more random, I've decided to add some of the mica powders. I'm using one of the blue ones um, and I'm spraying over with a solution of water with part gel medium or fluid medium in it. That just makes sure that the mica powders stay permanent. I feel like I'm losing some of my shadow so I'm going to use liquid acrylics and in ink black just to put in some of the deeper places to bring the shadows back um, spray with water to spread it out a bit so it gets into all the little nooks and crannies <laughs>
Now it's time for me to add some snow, some white, white snow. I'm starting with the heavy gesso in white and I'm just using my brush to dab it on quite thickly in places so it looks like the snow's landed on some of the flowers and things on her hair. Uh, that's some hair. Um, I also want to use more art pebbles but I'm using the slightly bigger ones this time more great balls of hail and I'm going to mix it in with the white gesso and just sort of roll it off my brush onto some of the bits so that it's adding texture snowy texture A little bit of um, metallic wax and white pearl can't quite see that on the bottom and just to add on the tips of some of the snowflakes and around the edges of the canvas for a little bit of extra shine I got these little flat back sort of diamondy gems in one of those little bargain shops for 99 pence for a sheet. So I'm just sticking some of these on because they're nice and shiny and a little bit of bling looks good with snow and ice. I simply finished this canvas off with some white enamel accents on her face, added the word snow and sprinkled a good healthy amount of holographic white glitter over it so it's very sparkly and frosty looking. And that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed watching the video and I hope it gave you some ideas. <music> <laughs>